we are to tackle global warming, then the 20% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions caused by deforestation and degradation must be reduced. But how can we preserve carbon stores, such as forests, while ensuring countries like Indonesia, which rely so heavily on natural resources for economic development, continue to progress? And how can we make sure communities who survive on forest resources have long-term sustainable livelihoods? Sustainable forms of land use that include big trees, such as this skatepark tree here behind me, uh, can provide economic benefits for local people as well as store large amount of carbon in forms of agroforestry. Under certain conditions this can also help to reduce the pressure on forest and, and extractive activities from the forest. Climate change will affect many people, many, but in different ways. People who live close to the sea may have find that the sea levels get higher and they get flooded. People who live in valleys in the mountains may find that there are more landslides and flash floods. In other places we'll get more droughts and we have a good chance that existing crops may fail in the future. The increasing amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases being emitted from the earth because of the impact of humans, is leading to changes in the Earth's climate. When we burn fossil fuels, such as coal, oil and natural gases, this releases huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. When we remove trees and drain or burn peatlands, the carbon stored escapes into the atmosphere. Raising cattle and planting rice also emit greenhouse gases. Indonesia is now considered as one of the highest, among the highest emitter of CO2. And the main source of that CO2 emission is uh, from the peatland forest fire and the, the peat decomposition. By signing the Kyoto Protocol, Annex 1 countries, that is developed nations, have made binding commitments to reduce their emissions from fossil fuels. In 2007, the countries with the highest greenhouse gas emissions caused by the loss of forests and peatlands also agreed to reduce their emissions. For these countries, a significant amount of their emissions are linked to economic development. The international community has agreed to work towards halving poverty by 2015, but this goal may clash with the goal of reducing climate change. The United Nations Climate Change Meeting in Bali, Indonesia, in 2007 will begin international discussions on a mechanism for reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation, or REDD. Countries are going to need sound data on carbon stocks and emissions from different land uses if they are to participate in a future REDD market. Recent work, recent analysis of data by the ECRAF Southeast Asia team has helped us to identify that certain types of forest conversion and land use change in the forest margins brings clear economic benefits to the local people and other ones do not. So if we want to reduce emissions then we should focus on those transitions that actually bring very little economic benefit. They can be easily replaced. This year we conducted case studies in three provinces, uh, that is East Kalimantan, Jambi, and Lampung. Uh, so we carry out a Bateman cost analysis, which consists of three components. The first one is the land use change analysis based on satellite imageries. The second one is the um, economic analysis uh, for each of the land use types. And the third one is the carbon stock measurement at the plot level. From all three components, what we get is something like this. Uh, so this uh, abatement cost curve basically shows the cumulative carbon emissions per unit area per year, and this is the economic gain for its associated land use types which uh, emits carbon. Yeah. This study looked at land use changes across the landscape 
not just what was occurring in the forests. When large trees are removed, regardless of whether or not they are in a forest, carbon is lost. From this study we found that 13% of the emission is associated with low economic gains, 66% um, with medium economic gain and 21% with high economic gain. Uh, for East Kalimantan, um, basically the low economic gain is uh, due to uh, abandonment of uh, clear fell forests into grassland or, or shrub. And then the medium gain is from logging and the uh, quite a high gain is uh, due to conversion from log over forest to plantation. And for Jambi provinces, uh, compared to those uh, from East Kalimantan, uh, there are much bigger portion of uh, carbon emission that falls under the category of medium to high economic gain. Uh, and this part basically is due to conversion uh, from log of a forest to oil palm and to rubber plantation. The results of this study show that Indonesia's carbon dioxide emissions can be substantially reduced without impacting on the country's economy. This will require changes in land uses to avoid activities which generate little economic benefit but release large amounts of greenhouse gases. The first step we need to take is to measure the emissions from different level of management. And we also need to do uh, at the same time the estimation of what would be the economic benefits of each of the management level. And it's also important to understand whether there is additional costs entailed with the alternative better techniques. The second step is to find a mechanism that gives economic incentive to the right group of people, those who take care of the forest, those who need alternative livelihood if deforestation is not economical and therefore should be not occurring. Uh, Rupes is rewarding upland pool for environmental services. As you can see from the name, uh, we are aiming to develop best practices in rewarding upland pool for environmental services that they provide. Various schemes are being discussed to compensate governments, the private sector and forest owners for protecting forests. In Indonesia, such schemes might include investments to counteract the drivers of deforestation, such as oil palm expansion, industrial tree plantations and conversion to agriculture. Okay, for RED, I think there will be two issues uh, to be addressed in, in Bali Corp. One is the uh, baseline or reference level. Um, countries are interested to know how the baseline will be established. And the second issue will be related to market uh, mechanism and also payment distribution. Two of six uh, rupee sites have potential in engaging in carbon market. We also support them with technical assistance such as train them in carbon measurement, carbon stock measurement, as well as help them in preparing some scientific document, documents to, uh, for them to engage in carbon markets globally. It is hoped the Bali climate change meeting will lead to a period of learning and experimentation so that countries can determine how best to reduce emissions within their own domestic context. Uh, we expect to have the pilot uh, studies in, in various uh, places covering a number of land use so that we can address the land use strategies. We need to have some incentives, some, some kind of support to the farmer so that they can uh, change their practices. In all rupee sites, the communities are practicing mixed agroforestry. It has potential to reduce emissions from degradation and deforestation, which can benefit the global communities. At the same time, it can give livelihood benefits for the local people. 
Tackling global warming through reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation is possible. The key to its success will be in finding the right balance between reducing climate change and reducing poverty while allowing development to continue. The issue of reducing emissions from deforestation in developing countries is now included as one of the key elements in our future action. I now invite the conference to adopt the draft decision entitled Reducing Emissions from Deforestation in Developing Countries Approaches to Stimulate Action. Hearing no objections, it is so decided.